Hello, welcome back to my channel Edis English Literature. I am Ardhindu De. Today we are going to read Astrophil and Stella Sonnet Number no. One by Sir Philip Sidney. Sir Philip Sidney is a courtier, soldier, poet, and a critic. When we are talking about sonnets, I think uh, you all know what sonnet is. A sonnet is a 14 line poem with a lyrical grace, with a musical uh, capability of tunes originated from Italy. Later, it has been uh, transferred during the Renaissance period in England. And the foreigners of all these uh, sonneteers who uh, have cultured this popular sect in English uh, had been what Sarah Sidney letter Pencer and Shakespeare of course and in the later half of the uh, development of English literature we can find out many of the sonneteers practice their sonnet writing so the forerunner of sonnet writing the purity of tone or its uh, musical purity as well as its structural purity we can search in Elizabethan text we will find obviously been a lucid flow of text with a beautiful merriment whereas in Sydney we can find out a packed melancholy uh, the reasons is quite obvious um, Sydney had been in love with Fendel of Deverex so with whom he could never be united whereas uh, Spencer loved Elizabeth Boyle whom he subsequently married so there is happiness a happy union so uh, Sydney's texts in Astrophil and Stella, the very title uh, is giving us a little glimpse of his personal life, uh, what the Astrophil and Stella means. Astrophil and Stella is a series of 108 odd sonnets uh, where there is packed reference of Sydney's love for Fenella de Varex, the daughter of Earl of Essex. The word astrophil, uh, which Sydney uses to denote uh, himself or to parallel his own ideology or the persona, is a bitter star like plant that grows as a harp. And Stella is a Latin name for star, and it is used for his beloved Fenelab Deverex. So his love was meant for. Uh, the star which is far remote in the sky. So, a star-like plant like Astrophil which is dreaming of uniting with the star which is in the heaven is a far-fetched idea, utopian idea. Sydney's packed melancholy that uh, we can see while examining each of the sonnets uh, is obviously for that reasons for that unrequited love uh, it was a love from a distance which cannot be fulfilled the Elizabeth Boyle the very beloved of Spencer is uh, having very close so we can find a little sweet bridge blowing in Spencerian sonnets but such sweetness or such tone is turned into melancholy, a bitter taste of it can we have here in Astrophil and Stella. Sydney's apology for poetry as well as his Astrophil and Stella, a series of 108 sonnets that we are talking about were all published posthumously and uh, this series uh, tells a better view of Sydney and we can have the person we can have the lover and we can have the very chemistry of Sydney's life, the embattlement and the way he sees the poetic creativity or poetic creation is the very pivotal theme of this particular sonnet. Loving in Truth is the very first sonnet of Astrovilla and Stella. In this sonnet, we will try to understand four basic things. First of all, the relationship between the poet and his beloved. Here, the astrophil 
and Stella. Here, the poet Sidney as is the at Struffel and the Stella is his beloved Penelope de Varex. Number two, we'll try to understand the poetic matrix or its design or its metrical form, uh, stanzaic pattern, everything. Uh, third, we will discuss the objective of this writing of this particular sonnet. The objective or the purpose of writing this particular sonnet. As it is the initial sonnet, um, it states a statement of the poet regarding creativity, regarding poetic articulation. And, adds, and it can be also viewed as an apology of writing or it's a humble statement from poet's end why he is writing Astrobil and Stella. Oh. The list, the poet has here intermingled a particular design and that uh, is unique in its style, a, a dramatic articulation at the very end of the poem. How is it suitable to the poem? I will discuss on that point too. Here, poet's tone is apologetic. He states very fairly that he is the sonnet which is in fact written uh, for a definite purpose of stating his own state of mind and his own desire to make a permanency of his love by articulating a verse which should remain perpetual one, uh, which should be a uh, everlasting one. So the path that he has taken is nothing new. Most of the Elizabethan sonneteers as well as classical writers have tried the same path of articulating his own words in such a way that should survive the onslaught of time and by this process he will eternalize uh, the lover as well as uh, his concept of poetry or his desires or his outlook, his like, dislike, Very same heavy. in front of him. In fact, um, a predicament that he has to cross over, the hurdle he has to cross over. The hurdle is the articulation, that means a, a pulse, a, an urge from inner core of the mind to write poetry. But artistry as you know, the creativity as you know, is a spontaneity, is a spontaneous overflow of powerful emotions if we say from Wordsworthian view. So uh, creativity is an instant, creativity comes within and it is nothing articulated or designed upon. So poet is in urgently needing some words to express his views, express his inner words. But such articulation or the fountain of creativity is missing in him. The reason is the undecuted love from Penelope de Varex, uh, with whom he is in love. As she is shining in the sky, being a stella, and he being an astrophil star-like plant growing on soil, so the distance is far-fetched. So he could not unite with his beloved and the required love that is missing is such an instant impact on him that his words are halting forth. He cannot articulate the words, the pains that he is passing through in his poem. So he uh, searched after those words from hither and thither and from nowhere he could articulate his own words. The muse of poetry at last comes and advises him and look in thy heart and write. So these are the preliminary theme of the poem. So a story of goes different phrases and different use of rhetorics. It is a sonnet as follows Petrarchan model that means octet and sestet. And the first eight lines comprising the same uh, repeated lines repeating like A, B, A, B and again A, B, A, B. Uh, last six lines follows uh, CD, CD and EE. So the couplet part is double rhymed and this is Petrachan model. 
So let's move into the text and explain line by line what it means. Loving in truth and pain in verse my loves to sow that she dear she might take some pleasure of my pain. Loving in truth the poet states very clearly that his love for final of Devarex is true from the bottom of his heart and pain in verse my love to show that is in verse and hyperbaton I am willing to show my love through verses as the poet says he is in love and he wish to express his love through Bhatsipikasan. Why so? Why he is willing to compose verses? That she, dear she, might take some pleasure of my pain. That he will articulate his own mind through words, through beautiful verses. And by that process, he will compose a beautiful poem and that poem should be entertaining one. It would be a pleasure talk for the beloved and out of that reading he uh, might express his own words but those expressions should be painful one. Those expressions would be the pain that involves in his heart for Unrequited love for final life Devarex. The pain also has a pun. It means the pain that involves while articulating a word into beautiful words. And by that pleasurable reading, his beloved will be entertained. And she will enjoy the very words. Pleasure might cause her read, reading might make her know. The more she will read, the more she will get pleasure and as she will get pleasure, she will further read it and the reading might open the heart of his, the treasured heart of his that is stuffed with pain, undiscuted love. And she will know the pain by which uh, lover Sydney is invested with involved with, living with, she might take a further knowledge of that and that knowledge might pity win. Knowledge might pity win and pity grace often. So that as she will read the poetry of his, she will know the pain of the, of the lover and that knowledge will make her the lady love compassionate and it will gradually transform into pity for the lover, pity for Sydney. That pity if sustained will gradually transform into sympathetic way into love, into grace. So the poetic design by which Sydney wishes to earn the final of Devarex coveted heart is simple. I am stating once again. Writing hearts uh, that involves the pain of articulation. The lady will learn from pleasurable reading the condition of poet's heart the more reading the more knowledge the knowledge will transform into pity and the pity gradually transforming in, into grace or love he will be successful in making that process a conditioned one how the first point writing the writing should be done first. Articulation of inner mind should be done first. If the first one is not done, then the rest of the process will be a vain process. 
so in search of perfect word in search for articulating compact poetry poet sidney said i sought fit words to paint the blackest face of o poet said that i am passing through a pain the o the ethos the pathos the agony with which the poet is living with at present is like that of a woman whose face is black the which black to be drawn by the poet and to drawing that picture poet needs perfect word but as infertile is the soil of his love such is the case of his poetic articulation he could not find a fit word he searched chapter word chapter word but couldn't find a rightful word that can articulate the agony he is passing through so he started studying others poetry he started studying others poetry so to steal some words that can articulate his agony studying inventions fine her wits to entertain of turning others lips to see if then should flow some praise and fruitful showers upon my sunburnt brain the poet says it is fine inventions if i study others poetry because it is a shortcut she is witty and her wits to be entertained so no gross bars would make the entire process is success so it should be a shortcut if i steal somebody's poetry and write my names so i started turning other slips to see if then should flow some fresh and fruitful showers upon my sunburnt brain myself my own condition is like that of a sunburnt brain where nothing fruitful is growing where where everything is futile barren like that of a wasteland we need some fresh and fruitful showers of creativity the creativity has been compared to be a fountain a spontaneous fountain obviously of words but such is not the case with the poet the fountains of creativity is missing in him so he wishes to steal from others if some words can be his own but words came halting forth wanting invention stay but the real invention or creativity are not possible by others words they are halting forth they are stumbling they are not coming smoothly invention the poet says is like a nature's child fled step them studies flows invention the metaphor is very clear the invention which is nature's child creativity is spontaneous creativity is natural creativity is divine and study is like the top step mother invention is nature's child but the step mother is study if i study and wish to invent then the relationship is like that of a child with that of a step dam step dam as like step mother who always called the child as hers is not the child always take a stick and blows similarly study will strike on invention whereas nature's child is invention the spontaneity or spontaneity that comes from within 
takes care of invention. But study, which is a stepmother, don't take care. It hates it. Continuous overflow of powerful emotions that comes from within, that is invention, is a spontaneous thing, is a natural thing. Whereas studying is like that of a stepmother and unwanted. Others feel still same but strangers in my way. Even if I find some of the lines from others poetry suitable for me, but they look strangers. When I think in my way, when I think this is my way and my way can be expressed to others lines, then it is surely a strange thing like that of these lines being stranger to my homeland. Thus great with child to speak, helpless in my throes. So here another metaphor has been given by which creativity has been told like that of a child who is yet to be born. He is in the home of a mother. As the child who is still unborn is expecting to be given birth by the mother and the mother is in pain, such is the condition in me. And the pregnant mother as in their labor pain goes through so many of the turmoil, so many of the pains as well as having a great future's hope. Same is me biting my prompt pain, the pain which is Till in his hand is like that of a torn child, the child who is not willing to go to school. A runaway, like that of a runaway child, his pain is acting like that. And beating myself for fight, I am thinking myself disdainfully that what I am doing. The pain is not at all ready to write others' words as if my own. He is, it is running away from the very creative urge in me. I cannot state my words through others' lines. At that moment, fool said my muse to me, look in thy heart and write. The poetic muse pops up and he gave him the advice, Hey, you are a fool. Look in thy heart and write. What you are writing is looking other's heart. Instead, you should look in thy heart and write. Writing comes spontaneously from within, not from hither and thither not from others' words or other writing. So, the last two lines that is the couplet, it states the pivotal point of this poem that creativity or creative urge is a personal thing, spontaneous thing, a thing that comes or a hope that comes or a word that comes from the fountain of your inner heart and that cannot be stolen from other treasures. The poem is also uh, as I am giving you a few of the references in this poem. The poem is uh, beautiful with some similes, some metaphors. Uh, some of the personification as well as few of the lines also alliterates. Uh, particularly inventions, nature's child, it's a metaphor. Step them study, it's also a metaphor. And um, personification also, invention as if compared to be a child of nature. Again, uh, the pregnant mother with that of uh, 
the poet who is uh, going to articulate some words in the way of his, way of his uh, articulation in the way of his stating poetry or in the way of his creation so uh, again uh, the poetic muse the the creativity the mother of creativity has been given a personified face who came and gave the advice to look into the heart of his own in the final part you can find that poetic muse comes up and gives a advice the advice is uh, so popular and so authentic and so romantic and uh, that writing comes from within which uh, which can never be copied or which can never be stolen from other treasures so if you have any questions regarding this sonnet you can just ask me here so thank you stay tuned subscribe bye bye